was kind of fumble initially as to what to call <laughs> it but the idea behind fresh off the boat was to uh, uh let our students who have just graduated from college or have just graduated from high school know that there is a world out there there are students who we worked with in the past who uh, uh, who are always there to uh, help and communicate uh, i know these are difficult times but let's liven up the mood by introducing uh, shivani dharmadakari uh, she's a student i'd worked with in 2013 14 when she was at american embassy school uh, seems aeons ago i think <laughs> but uh, uh yeah it was great fun i think meeting at amunirka office and doing uh, applications and what not uh having uh, worked with her i've just seen how trajectories and different paths students have taken it's been fascinating to see things that shivani has been doing at columbia at her internships and even at the current job so diving straight in uh, to the first question shivani what do you remember of your early days at columbia how was it settling in and also just figuring out life in a new city in a new environment so i'm not going to lie like the first year was it was kind of it was obviously tough because i was coming from india um and it is i feel like your first year it, it always it's always hard to kind of make new friends and uh settle into a a more challenging academic environment um but you know like after the first semester i definitely was able to make a lot more deeper connections with people through like different activities and such um and so yeah i definitely was able to settle in more um and get to understand like all the activities and all the things that the new york city has to offer which was really great great uh, but looking back do you think columbia was the right choice for you or would you 100%. reconsider <laughs> <laughs> so what like my first semester I I thought a lot I was like oh is this the right place for me but like I think honestly and maybe it's not just for me because like I've talked to other people um and after a few years like you just can't imagine yourself anywhere else like I mean I, you, once you start making friends and like you get into your classes um like no matter where you go to college like you you gain a deep connection to the place. And so I can't imagine like my life would be so different. Um and there's so many instances where I'm like, oh wow, if I hadn't gone to Columbia, like my life would be completely different. And so it's kind of crazy in that way. So yeah, how did that happen in terms of your pre-professional choices you made, the internships and opportunities that came your way at Columbia? Uh and finally, how did it lead to choosing the job at Cornerstone? Uh any any thoughts? Yeah, so I went into Columbia as a chemical engineer. Um and then I just kind of realized that it wasn't for me. Um so I I studied operations research which um is quite popular at Columbia, but it's basically a mixture of like kind of applied math, finance, computer science, um which are things that I I really found interesting and I I found the the program to be extremely applicable like um just in so many respects in terms of like data science um a lot of people go into finance so i i work in a very kind of niche industry it's called economic consulting um and they basically do work for legal firms so um i was kind of drawn to cornerstone because um of the kind of mixture of work they do they do a lot of like data heavy work um and they do a lot of like financial work. So those were t- two types of things that I was kind of interested in. Um and I've been able to really use parts of my major um at my job, which is pretty cool. Great. So for viewers who might not know much about operations research and now also even the connection with law, uh, given where the world is today where so many companies are filing bankruptcy and I'm sure there's a signaling effect in the stock markets, Do you think your jobs really become even more important now? Um I mean so the thing with like the industry that I work in is that um there's definitely like a temporary slowdown because courts are closed. Um but when people lose money there's a lot of like legal actions that are taken and so um they definitely anticipate that like the coronavirus 
like implications are gonna lead to like more illegal cases as companies file for bankruptcy as like um like people are trying to recover money that they've lost so a lot of legal suits will probably um happen in the next few months likely and what's the connection with the, the data science part in not necessarily in the current situation but in your job and what is operations research if you could start with that perhaps yeah so operations research is a very like broad subject i guess but um it's basically kind of using like mathematical tools to optimize processes so the applications are like there in supply chain like industrial engineering but then also kind of in finance as well um so kind of like you, it's a I always I always struggle with explaining what it is um but it, yeah like you can also use those tools um to to analyze things in financial markets as well so it's sure. like, so I, I it's kind it of a de- decision making sort of toolkit yeah you know, yeah um, exactly industries yeah. And... okay super so uh, do you think uh, students who are just interested in math and statistics should choose it or uh, they could be students who um, might be poets <laughs> people who don't love math and numbers shouldn't do it right or is it something it's that you definitely think they can be taught very mathematical based um so like it, i mean it's in the engineering school so it's probably more for people who really like math because I went in like thinking I loved math and I was like oh wow this is like a lot of math even for me but um yeah it's quite quantitative um right so uh you know in terms of advice to uh, the graduating class at Columbia or elsewhere uh, these are uncertain times a year ago the economy seems to be booming uh, there were jobs uh, and now suddenly there's just sort of lockdown uh what would you sort of advise them to think and do now i know it's a difficult question but uh, how do you deal with setback yeah um well i can give an example i mean like so the summer between my junior and senior year i i did an internship um at like a company and i i was really excited about it and i didn't get a return offer and so at that point i'd kind of assumed that I was just going to work there full time, right? Like cuz I'm like, oh, internship and then you get a full time offer and then you're done. But I think you have to kind of take a step back and like really make a plan. And even it is it is definitely like very tough, but hopefully like this is going to be kind of a temporary setback and like I think the key there's definitely like a few key things that like people who are get, getting ready to go into the job market need to think about like one is that um like m- making a plan of like what you actually want to do which is like harder than it seems so really like re- because when you're in an interview for a job like people want people need to see that you really want that you really want to do what you're saying that you want to do so really like understanding like looking at your strengths and like looking at your interest and figuring out like what jobs align with that and making a story for yourself. It's like it's not that different actually from like applying to college because you need to kind of like make a story um that you can tell in an interview. And then number 2 is like you you really need to network. Um which is like which is it, it it's really annoying, but um like looking on linkedin seeing where um you know people from your university have gone to school have started working um and reaching out to them um because like networking like as someone who now like reads resumes for like my job um and is involved in the recruiting process like if you if you reach out to people at the company um like they do know that um and that it does make a difference and then yeah just like really staying positive through the whole process because um it's it's really it is tough um but like you only need one thing to work out if you think about it so it's just kind of like really taking control of the application process and um um taking it seriously yeah i like the fact that you linked it 
to something akin to a high schooler applying to college yeah it's about personal <laughs> branding and all of that uh, but one quick thing there's obviously there are people who influence you there are mentors you seek in say professors or even career services or seniors uh, can you name like or, or just identify and tell me like who are the kind of people who mentored you and helped you remain positive or showed you the light <laughs> Yeah, I think like it was very important to me for me to like be connected with people who are positive because a lot of pe- like a lot of people in the job search process can be super competitive and like not make you feel good. Um so I mean somebody who really inspired me in the job search process um was like one of my seniors who is also in my major and so she was the one who actually like really helped me get my internship because like I was like sometimes networking is like not just like oh networking to get a job but it's like oh like your friends are also your network you know so she was like one of my really good friends and she was a year older than me and um you know we have a similar academic background and she really enjoyed her internship at the startup and I, and I thought that that was really cool it was like a data um data analysis startup And so like she told me about her experience and like because I knew firsthand like from my friend like really specific things about it um like that obviously like really shone through in the interviews um and so just like like talk to your friends um about what they're doing um and like see if it's interesting to you and I think that that's like really helpful in the process super uh, so but how would you say you're different like how would you say that these are my three strengths which i really want to project uh when uh, you know talking about yourself <laughs> what comes to you your mind <laughs> hmm i'm trying to think what i what i used to say in interviews um <laughs> but i think um definitely like um qu- my i used to always say like my quantitative skills and like my data analysis skills um which are things that like i was very lucky to have learned through my coursework um that i was able to apply and then um also just like obviously like i work really hard um which i guess isn't that huh so that that qualifies for sure yeah <laughs> yeah i guess like yeah i work i work hard um and then just like my people skills like i feel like that's really important um especially like even if you're in something that's like a quantitative discipline like being able to like work with people um and not getting frustrated to when you know new challenges come and so yeah great that's my... that's pretty good yeah. let's kind of go back a little bit uh, you know, high school days and the whole application process to colleges uh, what do you remember of working with our team is there anything that went well that's something that you think uh, you felt could have been better uh, and how did you uh, sort of uh, steer yourself through the application timelines i think like what was great i mean for one like working with your team like definitely helped me stay on track with applications because i think if you're just on your own it's it's very easy to leave things to the last minute and i i never felt like i had that stress i think also we started early like we started earlier than necessary um which gave enough time for like thoughts in especially like all the essays to kind of come to fruition because like you need to think about things and i think what the philosophy of you know of ed brand is kind of not It, you guys don't just like write people's essays for them you know like you're you're helping people they people really put their best foot forward um and i really liked kind of the brainstorming process that you had where cuz i i know i know that like um writing is something that kind of scared me a little bit like oh writing all these essays but um i thought it was really helpful the way that you guys like kind of brainstormed with me um to think about what would be the best idea for like the essays that I would write um and like the end product was I know that was really good so I found that super helpful great thanks oh thanks for the plug <laughs> but more than anything <laughs> i feel it's honest and uh, personally we i personally enjoy the whole writing process when we see a one single sentence in a 
700 word first draft which has potential yeah. and then sort of have those conversations and swing things around uh fantastic a broader question about education in general and with covid now many schools including university of cambridge today announced that they will most likely not have in person classes all through this year so not just spring also spring next year so that's going to be terrible uh so what do you think education can like as an industry a service could adapt and how can we reimagine things in the future i know it's a very broad question but any thoughts yeah i mean i'm hoping cuz like my brother now is uh is going to be going into his senior year so i hope i hope that like they're going to have some kind of combination like i've heard that they're trying to like um schools are trying to open their campuses in the fall but have um like a combination of virtual and like smaller classes like socially distanced um but you know like the reality is that like even if that happens like a lot of things will have to be done virtually um and so i think like a big thing um that's really important is helping people stay connected and so a lot of things are do- done over zoom um and what i found like now we have our even in the office like we have our meetings virtually um what something that makes a difference is just like and it's really small but like having video on rather than just having like you know um a blank screen with sound because like even though it's nice you can be in your bed it i think it's really important that people are can feel connected and you know by seeing people's faces in a classroom like that definitely helps um but yeah hopefully um there will be some kind of combination um right. of some in person classes because it is it is important um so yeah let's see <laughs> super so uh, yeah thank you shivani i think uh, i just wanted to uh, get a sense of where you are at li- in your life and um, uh, it's just uh, fantastic to hear your thoughts about things that you've been doing uh, so we will announce uh, a series of webinars where we'll invite you to speak again so for viewers uh, that's coming up soon and uh, signing out for now uh, feel free to uh, put in your questions and suggestions in our podcast uh, feed and we'll be happy to address them as we go along taking in feedback from everyone will be useful thank you